The first Borderlands game sold like 4.5 million copies, and then Borderlands 2 sold like 14 million, which is appropriate because it's approximately 14 million times better. It's got more guns, more colors, more Minecraft, and it's got an actual story, which goes a little something like this. Once upon a time, the Hyperion Corporation hosted a Bring Your Daughter to Work Day, so Handsome Jack brought his daughter Angel, and she liked it so much she decided she never wanted to leave. Ever. Jack wanted to upgrade his ammo capacity, but he couldn't find any iridium to give to Crazy Earl, so he tricked some idiots into opening a vault for him to get the iridium out of it. Then he did some... other... stuff, and before you know it, he was in charge of the entire Hyperion Corporation. Jack was humbled by this great honor, and wanted to give back to the community by transforming the bandit-infested wastelands of Pandora into a futuristic utopian society. There was just one problem. A crappy little town named Sanctuary didn't want to be wiped out. Now, Jack could have just used his army of thousands of robots to, oh, I don't know, surround the city and starve them out, maybe just block this bridge, which is their only supply line, you know, pretty much anything except the ridiculously convoluted plan he ends up actually doing. Like, come on, Jack, who's your military advisor, David Benioff? Jack puts out a Craigslist ad for Vault Hunters, and six people respond. The Vault Hunters get on a train, but Jack blows it up and leaves them for dead. Now it's time to pick your character. This time around, there's six classes to choose from, and they're all actually pretty good, but I'm gonna have to go with Mechromancer because one of her voice lines is a BattleBots reference. It's robot fighting time! You slowly regain consciousness, and Angel pops up and tells you everything's gonna be okay, but then Claptrap starts talking. Playing through the first hour of this game again will probably make you want to die, so make sure you have the Hyperion Suicide Hotline on speed dial. Thank you for calling the Hyperion Suicide Prevention Hotline. Handsome Jack regrets to inform you that you are a coward. You get to a small town and meet Sir Hammerlock, who's a safari guy, which is pretty lame, but he has a robot arm, which is pretty cool, but he repairs Claptrap, which is pretty lame, but he has the Mighty Morphin Quest, which is pretty cool, but he has this DLC, which is pretty lame, but he gives you a sniper rifle, which is pretty cool, but he before you can get to the main mission hub, you have to escape the glacier by killing Boom Boom and Captain Flint, which might be kind of hard if the Game of the Year edition didn't start you out with the most overpowered grenade in history. You board Claptrap's boat and begin the journey to Sanctuary. Your first setback is a short jump that can only be traversed with a car. So Angel downloads a car for you, but then you gotta go talk to Corporal Reese so that next time you're here, you can farm Savage Lee. Welcome to Sanctuary, the hub world of the game. It's got everything you could need. A fast travel station, a costume station, a bunch of useless vendors, and most importantly, a slot machine you can play while you wait for your one friend who's played the game a million times to turn in the quests. After watching all these stupid intro cutscenes, you get a quest to go meet the Firehawk, who's actually just Lilith. She tells you that her kinda boyfriend Roland has been kidnapped by some bandits, but she has a lot of standing around in this one room to do, so you're the one that has to actually go save him. To infiltrate the bandit camp, you have to get a bandit-styled car from Ellie, Scooter's big sister. You blow up some bandit cars, and Ellie constructs a new one out of their charred remains. So you return to the bandit camp and give him the old Stormtrooper disguise routine. After fighting your way to the top of the dam, you meet Roland. Roland reveals that Handsome Jack is trying to awaken some kind of ancient alien warrior thing, but don't worry, you'll totally stop him in time. I'm sure that's not going to be the final boss. In the meantime, you go meet Tiny Tina and Mordecai, who are both very helpful characters. Tiny Tina helps you build bombs to hijack a Hyperion train, while Mordecai sits in his sniper perch and keeps destroying the Varkid pods you're trying to farm. Gotcha, you hijack the train, but oh no, it's being guarded by Wilhelm, who apparently is super dangerous, even though you kill him before Roland's done warning you about how super dangerous he is. You get a power core and plug it into Sanctuary, but then plot twist, it turns out Angel was working for Jack the whole time, and she lowers Sanctuary shields. Jack's giant Death Star gun starts shooting at the city, but it only does like 10 damage, so it's not really that big of a deal. Lilith decides to teleport the city a couple feet to the left, which somehow means that Handsome Jack can't shoot it anymore, but unfortunately, that takes Sanctuary off the fast travel network. So you have to do a whole thing where you get the beacon and then defend it from robots for 10 minutes before you can go back to Sanctuary. Angel gets on the radio and convinces everybody to trust her again by giving them a great deal on a year-long VPN subscription to this video's sponsor, Random Ass VPN. Companies trying to steal your data will often protect your privacy online, you have to. I was in Barbados, hanging a picture on the wall. We totally do not condone piracy. Link in the description. Random Ass VPN. Do you really want Comcast to see your search history? Angel tells you that she has the vault key and that you need three ingredients to get to her. The first is a software update for Claptrap, which is weird because usually companies try to force those down your throat. Mordecai's bird has the upgrade, but it got captured and put in the Hyperion Zoo. You go to save her, but there are a few small distractions that might sidetrack you for a while. Uh, Vault Hunter, you've been farming loot midgets for like five hours now. Do you maybe want to go save Bloodwing? The next step of the plan is to win the favor of the Slab King Brick, because he's the only one that has the ability to remove small roadblocks from your path. To get on his good side, all you have to do is kill all his men. The final step of the plan is to head to the utopian city of Opportunity and kill Handsome Jack's body double so you can steal his voice. 
Now the final assault can begin. Lilith and Mordecai stay in Sanctuary because they have a lot of standing around in that one room to do, but Roland and Brick and Clap Trap join you for the assault on the bunker. After fighting your way through the Hyperion forces, you finally reach the peak when suddenly a giant flying robot starts attacking you. Uh, hang on a second, switch to zero, get bore, there we go. Finally, the door to Angel's chamber is open, and you get to see just how different she looks from her profile picture. She asks you to help her kill herself. Handsome Jack is understandably upset by this, so he does what any good parent would do. He sends in a couple robots which have already proven to be completely ineffective against you while he watches a live stream of his daughter being killed. After you kill Angel, Handsome Jack nothing personnels Roland and then one-shots the most powerful being in the universe with some kind of dog collar. Lilith teleports you back to Sanctuary, and Brick and Mordecai concoct a plan to go hack the Hyperion mainframe to find out where Jack took Lilith but you have to go do it because they just saw what happens when you leave that one room and they're not taking any chances. Now it's time for one of my favorite areas in the game, the Arid Nexus. Oh yeah, you have to go to Sawtooth Cauldron first. Man, I always forget you have to do this stupid area, it's so annoying. Like and subscribe if you hate Sawtooth Cauldron. Anyways, when you finally get to the Arid Nexus, there's a big old robot named Saturn that you have to cheese before you can go hack the mainframe. You discover that Lilith is being held on Mustafar, so you gather your friends and head out on one last mission. You reach the vault and see that Handsome Jack is using Lilith to charge the vault key. You shoot Jack in the face a couple times, but he uses his cutscene powers to freeze you in place while he summons the warrior. Fortunately, the ancient alien civilization that created the warrior also installed a giant gaping weak point on its chest, so it's really easy to kill. Then Jack stands up and starts monologuing again, but he forgot to use his cutscene powers this time, so you can finally kill him. No, 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 I can't. I like this. Brick and Mordecai show up, and you all celebrate your victory as Lilith decides to destroy the key for good. What the? DLCs? Now, I'm only going to be covering the four main DLCs. They did release a bunch of these short little headhunter pack things, but I couldn't think of any good jokes for them, but that's okay, because neither could the game's writers. Captain Sandhawk and her Pimpernel's Booty is a pirate-themed expansion that has a really great and original story. You have to help a lady find three pieces of a MacGuffin, and that helps you find a treasure trove of loot that's being guarded by a giant bullet sponge. It's, it's really good. Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage is an explosive-themed expansion where you fight in a gladiator pit for the chance to open a vault. Now, you may expect to fight all the gladiators in said gladiator arena, but come on, it wouldn't be a Borderlands DLC without tons of pointless driving to pad out the runtime. The final boss is the worst boss in the game, and the vault isn't even that great, but the real treasure is Pyro Pete's Bar. Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt is a safari adventure-themed DLC ripped right out of a pulp magazine from the 1920s, complete with a mysterious wilderness, dashing heroes fighting horrendous monsters, and a cult of savages who are the main bad guys, and there's witch doctors too, oh my god. Some guy named Professor Nakayama is trying to clone Handsome Jack, so you head on over to his place to kill him, but before you get the chance, he falls down some stairs and dies. This DLC is not very good. And finally, the crown jewel of Borderlands 2, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. The theme of this DLC is dealing with the loss of a loved one. This is my favorite DLC by far because the Ents drop B shields and it has the Grog Nozzle. Whew, so that's Borderlands 2. It's pretty long, but that's not even the end. You can still play through the whole thing again in true Vault Hunter mode, and then if you hate yourself, play it a third time in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, and then repeat that process for all six characters. Looks like you've got a lot of work ahead of you. I guess you could say that there's... No rest for the wicked. I was walking down the... Wait, that's not the right song. Hey everybody, it's me, Claptrap. Subscribe and ring that bell, or I'll see you in hell.